Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the most important piece in my hi-fi reference system as it sits today. I'm going to go over each piece and talk about the importance of each piece in the system. And I'm also going to talk about that synergy thing and why it's important to really get everything together just right if you want to maximize the sound coming from your system. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, so I'm going to go through each piece in my reference system as it sits today. This changes constantly because different things come in for review. When something comes in for review that um, is bests for my ears, what I've had prior, I usually upgrade if I can. So this is an ever-evolving system. Um, so what is the most important piece in this system? I can say that as this sits right now, this just puts out such a heavenly sound. It's, it's absolutely unreal what's happening with these bookshelves, this subwoofer, um, this turntable, um, my streaming. Everything is cohesive. Everything synergizes so, so well. So let's take a look at each piece of this system. Uh, this is just gonna be a rough video, shooting it with my phone. Um, but these are in for long-term review. I'm gonna have these in here for a while. These are the Focal, Utopia, Diablo, Evo Color. Such a long name, but um, you just call them Diablos. They're part of the Utopia line from Focal. And the Utopia line is their flagship line but this is the starter speaker in that line they go up to i think almost three hundred thousand for a pair of the big floor standers these retail with these stands are twenty four thousand, which is a lot of money for speakers but i have to say uh i've never encountered speakers as well made uh, as complete in a bookshelf as complete as these um you know, I've had some mighty fine bookshelf speakers in my life, Sonus Faber Guarneri's. I had all versions of those, um, and those are some of my favorites. I had Dynaudio C1's Dynaudio Heritage Special, which are among my favorites. Heck, those Bucard S400 Mark II SEs are some of my favorites for the money. I mean, for under 5K, that's my reference. But if you want something that's really extra special, um, this is something that'll do it for you. The stands are beefy. They're filled with sand from the factory. They're all metal. You have serious spikes. These are magnetic. So even if I move these, it sticks to these. So I don't have to worry about repositioning them. Now speakers are an important part of your system. A lot of people argue that the speakers are the most important part of your system. The most important part of this system is really not the speakers, um, but we're gonna move on. These are beautiful speakers. These are beautiful speakers, right? Different price points, you could still get beautiful music from either of them, but these are really special. They're not bright, they're not forward, they're not harsh, they're not hard. None of that, and I expected them to be, but I'll talk about these in my review. So what about the amplifier? So I have three or four amps I can choose from here. And uh, with this setup, really what's been working the best for me when it comes to ease of use, sound, electric bills, I'm, I'm taking everything into consideration. This Heaven 11 Billy Mark II is just phenomenal. I love this little amp, 2K. And uh, it's got a tubed Class A preamp, made it to a Class D high power amp. And I normally don't like Class D, but this really with the the tubes and i'm using an external dac i'm using my dcs clock lena and clock um but this with either the bucards 
Fleetwood DeVille's Focal Diablos. Amazing sound. It beefs them up in the mids. Is the amplifier and your preamp, is that the most important part of your system, of this system? Um, not really, but it's, it is important because amps do make quite a big uh, difference to the sound. When I hook up the Pass Labs X250.8 with the Pass Labs Pre, the sound gets a little more tangible, a little more three-dimensional, a little more airy. But this is just so light, easy to move around, easy to use, adds that little bit of oomph to the mids. Fantastic piece. But it's not the most important part of the system. What about your source? For source, I have my, for streaming, my DCS Lena and Clock. And I just have not heard anything from me that I like better so far in a DAC. And this is a streaming DAC, so it's all built in. It's expensive, but the music just sounds so amazing with that DAC. This turntable just came in for long-term review. This is a Pure Fidelity Harmony. And this is an absolute work of art. So this is my analog source for right now. It has an isolation base. Isolation base. These come apart. The plinth sets in the base. This is a work of art, an heirloom piece. It's equipped with the Stratos cartridge from Pure Fidelity. And, you know, I've had quite a few turntables in life. And I'll be honest, turntables never really gave me everything my digital gave me. That never sounded as good. Bad, so many bad pressings out there. They can sound thin and flat. And I've had some mighty fine turntables through here. The Fikert Volare was beautiful with that Koetsu cartridge. The Luxman PD-151 with the Luxman cart is a beautiful table. But I've never had a table in here like this. This is uh, finally allowing me to hear what a really high-end table and cartridge can do. The speed controls over here, um, the conductor, which is their latest speed control. It's everything is just beautiful with this turntable, but the cartridge is is stunning. I'm getting the same three dimensionality and imaging and beef and bass, uh, the same kind I get from my DCS stack, um, but it sounds sweeter still. I mean, it's just there's something beautiful when you have vinyl playing back in just the right way. And I've really never heard it in, in that way. It, it was always inferior to me until I started listening to this table. I'm gonna review this down the road, the cartridge, and uh, Pure Fidelity is sending me one of these Stratos cartridges to give away to one of you guys uh, on my channel, so stay tuned for that. The Pass Labs XP17 Phono Stage that goes with this. So the analog source, the digital source, are those the most important? Kind of, but not really. What about the power, right? I use a pure Puritan Audio PSM-156 with their ultimate cables. Is that the most important? It's very important to this system because I have problems with electricity, but it's still not the most important. What about the RHEL S510 sub that I have? Now this sub integrates so perfectly with these Focals. Um, and, and what's missing here? See this space? Yes, REL is sending me another S510 so I can experience the stereo sub um, experience. I can experience dual stereo subs. And unfortunately, I know I'm going to want to buy the review sample. So I'm kind of going broke running this channel. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But is this the most important thing in my system? It has worked wonders here. It transformed the system to what I didn't think it could be. I'm excited to see what two of them do, but it's not even the most important. How about this amplifier? Beautiful amp. My favorite amp, I think, that I've heard, the X250.8, you know, as a whole. It's still not the most important thing. So what is the most important thing? How about the cables? I have the Mad Scientist speaker cables here. Um, some of the best cables I've ever heard. Um, I have Nordis Red Dawn interconnects um, but the cables are not the most important part of a system what is the most important part of a system that would be the room and your setup now a lot of people like to say i have a crappy room because i have windows i couldn't be further from the truth 
these blinds, as I've said before, are thick. They go all the way to the floor. And I've put treatments over the windows, uh, Debbie and I, and we, we put room treatments in here. And the result was the room sounded dead, dull, and just not good. Um, I removed those after two days. And uh, I like to naturally treat a room. Uh, this room, in 35 years of me doing this, is the best room I've had. It's 13 wide and 18 long. It's basically has a big area rug. I have some blankets thrown around in the corners usually. Have a couch, right? This chair's not usually in here. This stuff's not usually in here. Um, and the walls are all wood. The ceiling's wood. The floor is wood. With these blinds closed, it adds just enough, um, just enough liveliness to the room. Now, the room, your space and setup is the most important thing in your hi-fi uh, journey, your hi-fi system building. A lot of people I see put their speakers like right here where I have these. If I were to plug these in right here, they would sound not very good. They would sound kind of muffled. I wouldn't get the imaging. I wouldn't get the big sound stage because I have them set back, right? And next to the cabinet. Um, speakers like to be pulled out into the room. They like to be somewhat away from the walls. After, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks of having these in here, it's taking me that long to really perfect where they go in the room. I, I change it every day for the first two weeks until they're dialed in perfectly, and I do it all by ear, right? Um, that's what I like to do. Call me an old timer. I like to tune everything by ear. Um, so the room is the most important. Your setup is the most important. When you have a room, you want to, you can dampen it naturally with furniture, with pillows. These, uh, I don't think they do much. I really put these in for looks, but these are supposed to be for uh, treating your room somewhat. And they're on Amazon. They're inexpensive. They stick to your wall. I put some there. Um, I put these fabric flowers here, right? Again, the blinds are thick, they go to the floor. And I have this stuff in here to absorb any reflections. In this room, there are no reflections. I've had bad rooms where everything was bouncing off of something. The base was awful, it was boomy, and I couldn't control it. This room, I have zero issues. As a matter of fact, this system, as you see it here, um, is one of the best systems I've ever heard in my life. And so I attribute that to the room size, shape, and the way these are set up. So always set up and room is number one. So what's the next most important thing? For me, it really comes down to source. I've noticed the biggest differences, even larger than speaker differences, by the source. I've sunk most of my money into my digital streaming source. I'm also using Shunyata Omega cables with this. Um, this source is about, you know, if you add this, it's about equal to the cost of the DAC and clock, and it's up there with it. This is the best analog I've ever heard of. I didn't think analog could sound this good, really. I've heard it sound good before at uh, a dealer who had like a $30,000, $40,000 setup, but I knew I would never buy something like that because I don't have thousands of records, but I've never heard anything quite like this. So no matter which speaker I use, these sources are showing um, how good they are. These sources, if you even hook up lower cost speakers, will make those speakers sound better than you thought they could. So when you hook up these kind of speakers to these kind of sources, you're gonna get the most out of each speaker you hook up. So that's important. You want to get the most out of each speaker you hook up um, when you're picking a DAC, a streamer. Um, not all DACs are equal. Room and setup, and in my opinion, now just take it from me, that's my opinion, so you don't have to follow it or take it as gospel. It's my experience. Source is next. After source, speakers. That's where I put um, after source. Now, 
I should back up. Before source, if you have issues with your electricity, you want to get that fixed in whatever way you feel you should fix it. Getting a dedicated line, it doesn't always fix it though. Some kind of conditioner. Always fix your power first if you're having buzzing issues or you know just weird noise electrical issues. There are ways to solve it. But say if figuring you have good electric source speakers, right? That's what I go. Source speaker. So DAC or or analog, then your speakers. Then I go amplifier. Amplifier. Um, so many amps sound so good. It's really just personal preference on style, design, features and sound, but a lot of amps sound pretty close. There's just different little flavors and house sounds from manufacturers, right? Um, so after amp, of course, cables, um, and that's how I finish off the system. And these are the Mad Scientist cables that I talked about in a recent video. These sound so much different than the Nordis Red Dawns. These have that meat, that pulp, that energy, that clarity but also the bass performance. It's, it's, they're unique. Um, a lot of speaker cables can not gel well with your system. So synergy is also key. For example, these speakers, a lot of people will say, well, I've had these, but they were too bright and analytical. In this room with this system, they're not analytical at all, and they're not bright at all. They're smooth, they're silky, they're highly detailed, highly holographic and three-dimensional and warm. There's warmth from these, but I attribute that to the Billy with its Class A2 preamp, helping that warmth come out of these and the subwoofer, which I have crossed over to about, uh, I have 60 Hertz and I have the volume very low. It, it blends seamlessly. The bass sounds like it's coming from the speakers. So, the subwoofer is important in this system. Um, it helps flesh out the focals even more. It helps add depth to the imaging and to the sound stage. Sub is very important as well if you have speakers that need a sub. You know, if you have big full range towers, you won't need a sub. Uh, it depends on your, your space. But all right, quick recap. Number one for me, room and setup, most important. That is what has the most drastic effect on the sound of a system for me in my experience. Second, source. So your digital streaming source, your analog source, very, very important. So much so that most of the money, the most expensive thing in this system is my digital streaming source. Next, speakers, right? Personal choice. So many speakers out there. So many of them sound amazing. Uh, some sound close. But each speaker has something that sets it apart that you may like or you may not. Speakers are very important, but I can put in a pair of $1,000 speakers to this system and they will sound way more uh, than, than their cost because of what's powering them and what's behind it. Speakers are very important, but I put that at number three, right? And there you go. I'll have a review very, well, not super soon, Probably in a couple of weeks, I'll have a review of the Focals. Um, I'm going to have a review of the Pure Fidelity table and that Stratos MC cartridge giveaway. That's a $2,000 cartridge. We're gonna give one of these away to somebody, one viewer here. So I'll have that review. Uh, soon, a few weeks, I'll talk about adding a second rel to this system and if it did anything, if it was frustrating to set up, I hear setting up dual subs like that can be little frustrating, but I take my time. Even if it takes me a week or two to set up, that's fine. So I'll be uh, reviewing all of those things and I have other things coming in as well. So I want to thank you guys. Thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment below. Love you all and I'll see you next time.